Get ready to embark on a journey towards becoming the next generation of millionaires, the faithful way. Welcome to uh, another beautiful episode of the next generation of millionaires right here on Radio Christian Voice. It's exciting to be back and thank you so much uh, for choosing Radio Christian Voice. Thank you for, you know, getting to just spend some time uh, with us. My name is uh, Kunda and in the studio with me, uh, I have uh, Dr. Kennedy Sonda, and we are back and uh, getting to discuss... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. It's good to have you. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be here and ha happy to be talking to you. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and and today we'll be getting into a very interesting topic. We're going to be looking at uh, the measure of uh, true wealth. Yeah. You know, what is the measure of true wealth? But before we get into that, I would love us to just recap on our last program. We yeah. did look at, you know, what, what, what wealth is not, like we you know so maybe we could just get into that a little bit for somebody who missed it uh, last week yeah so what we were looking at last week uh, was that uh, you know or let me let me put it this way when you want to create wealth uh, and it's very important for young people to be able to understand that that when you want to create wealth uh, you have to understand the true measure of wealth. Uh, because if you don't understand what the true measure of wealth, there is a danger that you may mistake certain things that are not really wealth for wealth. And the biggest danger is that uh, we have people that look at the appearance of wealth to be wealth. Uh, so that is the, that is the danger. And, and, and therefore, some of the things that we, we, we looked at is that um, many people look at um, things like maybe the type of car a person drives. You know, they are looking at indicators rather than the actual wealth. Like we say, um, you, you, you pick smoke or you go away, you run off with smoke, but you leave fire. So they may, they may focus on the appearance or what we think rich people look like, you know, uh, how they look. That's what, that's what w many people might, f might, uh, might uh, think that wealth is. For example, you may look at things like maybe a residential area where a person stays or where he lives, and you think that is a symbol of wealth. You know, you say, ah, that, that means, so if I can go to a place, maybe rent a big house, and, and then I'm, I start thinking I'm a wealth person. Uh, and another thing we've talked about, maybe the type of car you drive. Uh, sometimes even the amount of money you earn, like the salary that you, you get per month, sometimes can be misconstrued as being wealth. Because I get a lot of, my salary is big, then I think that I'm, I'm wealthy. So... Uh, those are the, 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 the dangers of mistaking the appearance of wealth for wealth. For uh, sometimes even just the way you look, you know, just the external appearance, the, the, the clothes you wear, the clubs you belong to, the type of watch you have, you know, the specs. And there are people who can stand and say, do you know where I'm standing here? Where I'm standing here? You know, what I'm wearing from my, my shoes to, 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 to my head, I'm worth $5,000. We've seen particularly our, our young men uh, uh, in, 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 in America, you know, who, you know, sh try to exhibit wealth. As somebody said, they wear wealth or riches on their bodies. Now you find they're wearing gold chains and gold rings and, and things like that. But when you look at actual real wealth people, they, I, I like to put it this way, that people who are not wealth, particularly the middle class, they masquerade as wealth people. They appear wealth. But when you look at real wealth people, they masquerade as just ordinary people. In fact, the real wealth people not the celebrity type. They don't even want you to know that they are wealthy. They don't even appear wealthy. They, they, they have nothing to prove. It's people who, who are not wealthy who want to pretend to be wealthy like by, by their appearance. Mm. So those are the dangers that uh, 
we, we, we looked at last time and we said in the next program we should focus on what, how do you really measure how wealthy you are, you know, and that's something that we need to focus on. All right, beautiful. And so in case you've just tuned in, this is uh, the, generation, the next generation of millionaires right here on Radio Christian Voice. We're also live on our social media platforms as well, so get to follow us and uh, let's get interactive. We're looking at the true measure of wealth uh, today. And so let's start by understanding the different types of um, 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 uh, the different types of uh, measurements of wealth that people commonly use. Okay, so the, 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 most, common, the most common measure of wealth uh, is what is called net worth. Okay, so net worth is the first aspect. Uh, the less common measure of wealth is the measure of wealth by how long you can live without working what I call time measurement of wealth. Uh, there is also another aspect which probably, if we don't cover in this program, we may cover in the next program, is basically we also measure wealth by the stages, okay? Like there's a basic stage, there's a next stage, and there are five stages. And you should be able to be able to measure at what stage you are in terms of wealth. You know, and uh, the one that we would want each and every young person to know is the middle, which we all of us must aim at, is the middle level. Uh, and then the ultimate aspect of wealth is, um, is, is desirable. And the, the last two are desirable. But what all of us must aim at is basically what we call as, um, the, if you look at the five stages, there's what we call uh, financial, secu uh, financial protection, financial security, financial independence, financial freedom, and ultimate financial freedom. So those are basically some of the key measures we can actually use to be able to measure our wealth. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, very interesting. And... Uh, um, I, I, would, I would want you, you know, to, uh, to just kind of like, um, to get a little bit more in detail, mm -hmm. to elaborate yeah. uh, a little bit more. Okay, yeah. Let's, let me begin with um, the, the net worth model, what I call net worth model. Um, and in fact, it's basically the basic standard that people use um, in terms of, uh, of, of measuring wealth. And so net worth model basically uh, talks about, uh, you know, how, how wealth a person is. And this measurement, we have to look at a number of factors. Number one, we have to look at assets. Number two, we have to look at liabilities. So these are important concepts for, for, for young people to know uh, that assets are actually determinants of wealth. You know, you are wealth in direct proportion to the assets that you have. Wealth people have a lot of assets. Then the other concept is a concept of liabilities. Uh, liabilities actually are things that cost, m cost you money. Assets in a basic simple term, I remember years back when my children were young, I used to uh, tell them, uh, I used to tell them that assets are actually things that bring money in your pocket, mm. you know? So an asset is what brings money in your pocket. Then liabilities are things that take money out of your pocket. And uh, my children would argue amongst themselves, telling their friend, you know, you're talking about uh, maybe seven year or 10 year, 11 year. Mm. And say, so you're telling the friend, you are a liability to that. <laughs> you take money out of daddy's pocket and, and things like that. So, so what, it, what it is, is that uh, to measure wealth, we, we look at what, what your net worth is. And net worth is basically, uh, it's, it's um, uh, you get, the, it's basically total assets, the total value of your assets minus your liabilities, okay? So now, 
And then what you get is what is called net worth. Uh, what I mean by this is that, uh, for example, you need, you need to list the things that you own with value. Uh, if, for example, you own houses, so you list house, maybe you can use uh, plot number, house number so so, you know, maybe a location, the house in Chilenje, the house in Minud, and you list the, 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 what you own houses. You can look at land, you can look at um, maybe cars, you can look at um, your shares and, you know, your bonds. Uh, so everything that you own with value, you list them. And once you list them, the next thing you do is you estimate the value. If you know the actual value you put, certain things are easy to know. For example, cash at bank, you know the value, you know how much you have. The, the shares, you know the value of your shares, you know the value of your bonds, you know the values of your treasury bills. So you list all that. And once you list them, then you estimate the value or you list the value. And, and after you do that, you get the total. Once you do that, then you also list what you owe. Okay, so assets is what, uh, what you own, liabilities are what you owe. So now you list what you, what you owe. For example, you may have a loan with a bank or whatever financial institution uh, you've gotten from. You may have uh, the salary advance, that's part of your liabilities. You may also have uh, unpaid bills. You've already consumed the service or a product, you, borrow, you, you, you got chickens on credit, clothes on credit. So you get all that and you list them. And once you list with their values, then you, you, you get the total. Now, once you do that, then you subtract. You subtract the liabilities from your total assets. So total liabilities from total assets. That's what now gives you net worth. And that's how you'll be measured in terms of how wealthy you are. So when they say this person is worth so much, what they are implying is that they have deducted what he owes from what he owns. And that, that's what gives a person uh, a net worth. Now, by implication, you can actually, you can have two categories of people just by that definition. Because according to that definition, everyone is wealthy in, a, in, in one way or another. Either you, you are positively wealthy or, for lack of a better term, your wealth is at neutral or your wealth is in, in measured in minus terms. For example, uh, you may find that, um, um, let's take for instance a poor person. The, a poor person may actually own nothing and own nothing. So, and their net worth might be zero. I was doing a, a workshop some years back at one um, uh, donor funded project and I gave the participants, I gave them the, the sheet for them to assess their net worth, the sheet that I've prepared. Um, so they were calculating their, their list, they were listing their assets, and uh, their liabilities. Then uh, there were these, I think there were two or so young people, if I record, one was, was female, one was male. And I looked at their sheets, you find that they owned nothing and they owed nothing. So I said they were financially innocent. <laughs> so they didn't own anything, they didn't owe anything. So they were just basically at neutral, okay? But then you have other people, the, the actual measurement of wealth or tracking how wealthy you are is when you, you have more assets than liabilities. So for you, when you calculate your net worth, it will be in a positive sense. You have a positive figure. But there are also people, and this also tells us the three categories, the three classes of people, the three economic classes, which we'll talk about in the other programs. So you have the wealthy, you have the middle class, and you have the poor, okay? So a lot of people in the middle class level, sometimes you might find that they are negatively wealthy. What do I mean? You find a person has more liabilities than assets. They have more liabilities than assets. So you find that 
uh, a person's uh, re, um, the uh, liabilities, uh, let's say, two million. Their assets are worth 150. So when you subtract two million from 150, you find them they are minus 500,000. Okay, meaning that for for them to to be where the rich, where the poor person is, they must first cover the 500,000 ditch to reach zero where the poor person is. So you can, be, you can have a person who is looking wealthy, but is poorer than a poor person. Okay, is poorer than a, a poor person. But actually real wealth is where now you have more assets, you increase on your assets, and then you are reducing on your liabilities so that you have a positive net worth. And this is something that we need to start tracking. And every person, whether you're young or old, you have to track your net worth. Uh, because most people like tracking their salaries. You know, ah, I get so much and uh, next time I'll be getting so much. That's not, uh, that's not, uh, the, if for a person who wants to get wealth, that shouldn't be the focus. So that is very important in terms of uh, creating wealth. Now. So for you to be able to create wealth, it means your priority should be to create or acquire more and more assets. That should be the preoccupation. Now, a lot of people are in employment and a lot of young people, their preoccupation may be just focus on how big a salary is going to be. You know, and generally people with the wealth, with a job mentality, they are preoccupied on a salary. You know, and that's what they are tracking. But if you want to be a wealth person, what you need to focus on is actually how uh, the value of your assets. Keep on accumulating assets. You can start a bit by bit, but you can grow out. Of, uh, uh, you can grow that and increase that. That is very, very important. I know we'll talk about um, maybe in details in terms of the different assets, uh, especially when we start talking about the different types of incomes that you get. So that is the first measure of wealth. The second measure of wealth is uh, what I call as, as time measure of wealth. In other words, the question is, you are wealth in direct proportion to the number of days you can live without working physically or anyone else in the household working physically. How long can you continue to live okay, without earning an income, I mean without working physically, and no one else in the house is earning an income, and yet you maintain the same lifestyle. Um, so wh what I mean by that is, let's take for example, uh, somebody has been working physically, maybe you have a job, um, and all of a sudden that is no more. And uh, none of the people you live with, maybe your spouse, your brother, whoever you live with, is also not working. The question is that how long are you going to live, you know, but yet maintaining the same lifestyle? So the longer you can live without working physically, the more wealth you are. Now, real wealth people can actually live indefinitely without physically working. But a lot of people, they, they, you've, you've seen what happens, you know. In, in, there are people who can't live even for a month. They, they get paid, but they can't survive up to the end of the month. I remember uh, some years back, when I was uh, a young person in my 20, early 20s and we were students at the uh, University of Zambia and we were getting bursaries. And when we get bursaries, you had to cover three months. The government gives you at the beginning of the term and then we didn't have semesters. At the beginning of the term and you have to survive with that same money at the end of three months, you know. Uh, that's why I learned financial discipline. Uh, m a lot of my colleagues, they will do well the first month. Second month, they begin to struggle. Third month is serious problems. So, and you find that a lot of people who work or who earn a living, they have a challenge to actually stretch the salary up to the end of the month. 
Now, if you can't even live up to the end of the month, what will happen if you are not even getting an income? Now, the way we, the way we measure this, uh, how long you can live without working or anybody else working, is that we get, for example, you get, um, you calculate your monthly expenses. Uh, and you get, okay, maybe you say, I, I, I live on 250,000, I mean, sorry, 2,500, or maybe we, you live on 5,000 a month. Then, um, then you say, okay, uh, how much liquid assets do I have? And by liquid assets, I mean you are looking at things like, um, you know, the, the money at bank, cash at hand, cash at bank, uh, treasury bills, bonds, those things that you can easily dispose of and uh, turn into cash. So when you, when you look at that, you add all that. Let's take, for example, you have um, maybe a total of uh, 20,000 in terms of uh, 20,000 quach. Then you divide, divide uh, 5,000 into 20,000. You know, you will find that you, you, you get the answer, which is four. You get four out uh, as an answer. Which means, and I'm just trying to explain the concept, which means you are only wealth for, for, for four months. You know, your wealth will take you for four months. You know, that is, that is, and sometimes when you have done workshops and people have calculated, I remember one time one lady saying, oh my God, I don't even know how I've been surviving. Because she was, like in the negative, you know. There are people who will even show you that, um, you know, <clears throat> maybe, maybe they, they find zero point something. You know, because they don't have enough liquid assets that they've set aside. Of course, there are things like people who gain um, maybe have rental income that can be able to help you um, maybe to see how far you can be able to go to be able to maintain uh, your, 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 your lifestyle. So these are important elements for, for young people, those of you who want to be next, the next generation of millionaires, to be able to understand the concept of assets, the concept of, of liabilities, um, and then the concept of how long you can live without working, neither anyone in the house actually working. Yeah. All right, and uh, I know we, we seem to be running out of time, but before we, before we close, um, you shared of um, two young people who either had uh, <laughs> liabilities or assets they didn't own or they didn't owe anything. Yeah. Uh, I said they, it, were, new, they were innocent. They were innocent. Financially Financial. innocent. <laughs> Could that be a good thing? <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's a difficult question. <laughs> Well, it's, it's just that it, they were just starting. They were just employed. Yeah. So you expect that young people, most of us, we start from that point. But which, which shows that there is no uh, generation wealth. They are not, many of us do not inherit wealth. If anything, we inherit poverty. Uh, what I mean by that is that before you even start working, there are people looking to you, you know, and your parents are saying, now, at least things are going to be better. better. <laughs> uh, Kunda started working. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you are a firstborn, you are even in more problems. If, whatever, maybe you may even be thirdborn, but you have big brothers and sisters who are, who, who are dependent, and they start putting pressure on you. So you find that before you even settle down, you actually have so many mouths to feed. You know, your parents, uh, you have brothers and sisters, you have cousins, and some of them actually even move in with you and they start living with you. So that's, where, that's the challenge that is there. Mm -hmm. um, so w for us, it's, it's, it's normal, but it shouldn't be the situation for us, for our children, that our children should not start at zero. Our children should start somewhere, if anything, I recommend that, you know, by the time parents must prepare, by the time a child is starting to work, maybe parents have already built a house for a child, okay? They, you know, there are people who have built houses and they've assigned them. This child is for child one, this house is for child one, two, child three. 
the, by the time you, the, a person is working, they are moving in their own house. Or uh, they, they, they may be living in another town, the house is somewhere else, but they are getting rental income. Now that rental income can supplement on the, the income, the rent that they are paying somewhere. Maybe they can even get a surplus. Mm -hmm. So that is, the, that is the challenge that is there. So, but the good thing is that they are not into minors. Mm -hmm. They are just at zero. They can begin to build. From there, they start building the wealth. Yeah. Rather than first, you have to bury the Bad ditch, ditch yeah. that, that, that uh, somebody has already, uh, you've dug for yourself. Mm. So that, yeah, that is the, that is the challenge yeah. that so, is there. Which, which is an advantage, at least you could start building from yes, somewhere now. Yes, you are, you are starting from zero, yeah. but, and then you start building. But the problem is, m most young people without financial education, they actually, they, they are at zero, and what do they start doing? They start digging. Instead of building, they start digging. Yeah. They start borrowing. Mm. Uh, they, 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 they immediately want to show that they are also wealth. They, they, you know, they, they, the self, you know, play, plays a big role in, in their lives. You know that if you look at scripture, we as human beings are tempted in three areas. Okay? There are three areas that we are tempted in. The first area you are tempted in is from your physical, physical drives, appetites, desires. You know, hunger, thirst, sexual drive, and, you know, and, and all this. But the second area, uh, according to uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, you know, it talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the eyes is, is basically temptations from the things we see visual allurements and these are very so a young person is actually affected in all three areas the physical aspect in the sense that you are young your body is firing at uh, maximum you know you feel hungry easily your sexual drive is high you know they, they, so physically and you may not have enough to fulfill those appetites there are appetites that may not even necessarily be sinful but can lead into sin then you have these the, the, the visual stimulations, you know, the, the lust of the eyes, the things that we see. Young people want to immediately look like people that are already in, in, in employment, people that have already been employed for a very, very long time. Then the, the other one is the pride of life. This affects the, the thing about who I am, you know, how important I am. You know, you want to feel the, the, the pride that we have about our achievements, you know, who we are. You know, we want to feel superior over others. And a young person is affected in all these areas. So when, especially you are not a Christian, uh, and then you start working, you have these appetites, then you have the visual uh, allurements, then you have the psychological effects of trying to prove who you are, you know, it becomes big, big, a big challenge. And the tendency is for a young person to begin digging. Because you want to show off to other people that you are actually well to do, you are doing well, you know, and, and things like that. So that's the danger for young people that they may they have to be very mindful of. Yeah, that's very true. Awesome. And uh, one advice there, you hear it, Moemi Sepela, Kwena, Marianda, so, but Dr. Kennedy, simply saying, look, we must begin to build first before we start digging. And I think that's like really. We should not. Good. We should not even dig. Oh, we should. We should. We should. We should not dig <laughs> unless you are digging a foundation for your house. Let's begin to build up by accumulating assets, and let's not be worried about what people think of us. Yeah. In fact, somebody said I read a book where somebody said anyone who worries about what other people think of them can never be wealthy, because human beings, whether you like it or not, they will. They will think about you. In either positively or negatively. But what they think about you does not matter. It only matters to those who, who hold those who, who hold the opinions of others to be very important to them. Mm. That's where that, that's the challenge is. But anyone who wants to create wealth, because has to forget about cre about appearance. Because for a very long time you may go and appear like a person who is actually very, very poor, and other people may not even, you know, think well of you. But 
the people's opinions change. All of a sudden, they say, ah, Kanshu boys, the Kanshu was doing something. Eh? You know, look at him. He's well to do. He's stable. You know, and so that is that is the 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 challenge. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming through today. It's been awesome talking to you. Thank you very much. All right. The next generation of millionaires. We have to go now. Thank you so much for choosing Radio Chris and Voice. We'll be back uh, next week at the same time. Thank you so much for always choosing Radio Chris and Voice. Enjoy the rest of our programming. Bye bye for now.